hello everyone and uh, today we will discuss how to launch an ubuntu ec2 instance so here i am um uh, logged on in into my aws account on the console this is my home page and as you see these are some of the services that are recently visited and also the list of various services that are available on aws so today uh, we will be looking at the ec2 service under the compute group so let's click on ec2 now as you see there are no instances running at this point of time and uh, what we will be doing is we will be creating a new ec2 instance for ubuntu so let's click on launch Okay, so here you do see um, the list of all the Amazon machine images. As you see, there is Ubuntu right there. Okay, now I believe most of uh, the people watching this video would be using a free tier account. So as you see, this is free tier eligible. The easiest way to ensure that you don't get any charges and you are using the free tier uh, AMI is basically to check on free tier only so this would kind of uh, filter out uh, all the AMIs that are available for free tier so uh, let us actually choose the Ubuntu server over here so let's click on select okay now we are on step 2 which is choosing uh, an instance type and if you scroll down you will actually see all the different instance types that are available they typically differ uh, in terms of memory the, the storage whether the EBS optimized or not network performance and IPv6 support and definitely the family type like right? as you see this uh, T2 micro is a free tier eligible uh, instance type and uh, as you scroll down it's a general purpose uh, instance type as you sc scroll down you will see these are compute optimized and if you scroll down even further there are a bunch of them which are gpu graphics optimized and if you scroll down further you see memory optimized and i believe there will be storage optimized right here so be careful what instance type you select because um, if you if you select one of the instance types that are not free tier eligible then you will actually incur some costs so the best thing is to uh, go with t2 which is a free tier eligible and as you see there's a review and a launch button right here so you can potentially go ahead and launch this ec2 instance uh, right immediately after this step uh, but what we will be doing is we will be going and configuring the instance details. So let's click on next. Now, as you see, we are step three where we are configuring the instance details. So you will see uh, potentially like how many number of instances you want to launch. And if you want to launch them in an auto scaling group. Now, I'm not discussing auto scaling group in this particular video. But I'll create a separate video on that. Now, if you want to use any spot instances or no, so let's do one thing. Let's uh, change this number of instances to two first. Okay. Now, every AWS account comes with a default AWS VPC, which is nothing but virtual private cloud. Okay. So let we will be launching this um, EC2 instance in our default VPC, and uh, uh, the default VPC typically has about three subnets and these are public subnets so you can potentially select any one of the subnets from here and launch your instance in that particular subnet so let's select subnet 2 okay and as you see there are 4091 ip addresses that are available now since this is a public subnet uh, it does have auto assign public ip uh, enabled for it now, uh, for this demo, we will not be associating any uh, IAM role, but if you want, you can associate IAM role that will allow this EC2 instance to communicate uh, to any specific uh, AWS service, depending upon the access that is provided and selected. Here, you get a chance to uh, set your shutdown behavior. That is what happens 
when you shut down the machine should it be stopped or should it be terminated so typically it is stopped and we will be selecting stop as well and another thing is uh, enable termination protection now this basically protects as the tooltip says uh, against any accidental termination of your instance now this particular uh, feature comes in very handy when uh, you are working especially in a production environment where you do not want anyone to kind of go inside and accidentally terminate your uh, EC2 instance. But I mean, in your regular day-to-day -day environments like your dev or your QA, you might probably not want to use this feature. Typically, uh, the free account comes with the basic monitoring enabled, but if you want detailed monitoring, then you can enable detailed CloudWatch monitoring over here. The basic monitoring gives you metrics for every five minutes, but the detailed monitoring gives you metrics uh, all the way down until a minute. Now, the tenancy is generally shared. This is the default uh, tenancy that is available but you can potentially go and select dedicated and dedicated host. Now, as it's written over here, that additional charges will apply for dedicated tendencies, so be careful when you select that. And what I would certainly suggest and recommend everybody watching this video is to please check out these links for dedicated hosts and dedicated instances and clearly understand uh, what is the difference between uh, both of these and this is basically if uh, t2 unlimited if you want to enable it or disable it typically enabling it does incur additional charges by default uh, there's one network interface that is associated and if you want you can assign uh, an additional uh, ip address if you want okay now we're going to um, Go ahead and click, click on Add Storage. Now, by default, as you see, there is a root volume associated with this uh, EC2 instance. By default, the size of the volume is 8 GB bytes. That is GIB. This stands for GB bytes. Okay. And the volume type is general purpose. Now, if you want, you can make it provisioned or you can make it magnetic. Uh, typically, general purpose will do the trick. But uh, if you want, if you have a lot of I/O um, operations happening, then you might probably want to go for provision IOPS. Now, as you saw, the moment I changed my volume type, the IOPS changed to 400. And generally, the IOPS will depend upon the size of the volumes. For example, if I change this to 10, it might probably not change. But if I change this to 100, uh, I can probably increase the IOPS over here, possibly. So in this case, um, the IOPS, I, it gave me the flexibility because it's a provision IOPS to change the IOPS. But if I change this to uh, general purpose, you will see that it does not allow me to to edit the IOPS um, associated. And the IOPS value that you see over here, for, especially for general purpose volume types, is dependent upon the size of the volume. Now, if I change this back to 10, you will see that the IOPS will reduce. So you saw it reduced from 300 down to 100. Okay. So um, the maximum size is uh, 3000. So if I change this to 1000 GB bytes, you will see that uh, the IOPS value is uh, 3000 IOPS. Uh, one thing that I would certainly want to bring to your notice is delete on termination. Now, generally, as you see by default, this is checked. That means if you terminate this EC2 instance, this volume will be deleted. But for whatsoever reason, if you want this particular volume type to continue to live even after you have terminated your EC2 instance, simply uncheck this, um, this option and your... Uh, volume type will continue to live and is available even after your EC2 instance is terminated. So I'm going to reduce this back to 8 GB bytes. Okay, and you'll see the IOPS changed uh, immediately. This volume type is not encrypted. Now by default, there's a root volume, but if you want, you can add an additional volume. As you see, it's 
um, the volume type is EBS and again you can change its, uh, its size and you know change its volume type as we did on the top. The next thing that um, we are going to do is uh, add tags. Now you can add tags um, depending upon you know how you would want to use it. One of the key tags that I generally use is environment and I say hey this is my production server and this typically this tag gets associated to the instances and to the volumes that are going to be created um, uh, with this particular configuration. The next thing is to configure your uh, security group. So you can either create uh, a new security group or you could use an existing security group. So now I, in my Linux video, I had created the security group for EC2. So I'm going to reuse this particular one. Okay. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and create a new security group for yourself. Uh, it's totally up to you and you can change the inbound rules or the outbound rules of the security group depending upon your requirement. Now since I selected an existing security group it actually moved, to, moved me further to step number seven which is review uh, instance launch. So essentially this is nothing else but a summary of uh, all the choices that we have made so far. So as you see the the server type is Ubuntu 16.04 uh, LTS. Um, the instance uh, type is T2 Micro. I'm using this particular uh, security group. And uh, in this particular security group, um, this particular port is open. As I said, if you want, you can potentially open any of the ports that you need, uh, either during the launch or even after the launch. And the moment you make any changes to the security group those changes will be applied immediately now this is one of the key points that you want to remember because when you go for the exam uh, especially if you're going for the certification exams this is one of the key questions that does come that hey if you make any changes to the security group how soon or, or how later would the changes be will be applied so you want to keep in mind that the changes will be applied immediately um, these are the dis uh, details about the instance type. So it is going to actually launch two instances. Uh, and these instances will be uh, as per the purchasing plan on demand. Now, um, over here is the storage. So we have only associated a single root volume to this, which is going to be for eight, eight uh, Gibi bytes. And the tags that we have associated is the environment tag and the value is production so now let's go ahead and launch these instances now when you click on launch it actually gives you an option to uh, either select an existing key pair or create a new key pair now i already have an existing key pair on, on this particular machine i had created this in my uh, my Linux uh, EC2 instance demo, so I'm going to reuse that key pair. But if you want, uh, if you don't have a key pair, uh, feel free to you know create a new key pair. So now I'm going to select my existing key pair and then click on launched instances. So now, as you see, it's giving me um, that I can only launch a single instance. And specifying private IP addresses uh, you've specified two instances so I will have to go and actually retry or I will have to go back to the review screen and go and change um, the number of instances that I would want here I'm going to remove this okay Next, 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 launch, acknowledge, launch instances. Okay, so now this time it was successful and we are going to launch instances right away. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So this is the instance ID 
as you see and now it's being filtered for this particular instance ID so this comes in really handy if you have multiple EC2 instances and you can actually set the filter right up on the top and clicking this little um, icon over here will you know push the screen right up to the top and limit you to only the number of records that you see over here so as you see I have a lot more real estate at the bottom now which I did not have earlier so um, this particular instance is currently being, initi being initialized as you see the system checks are currently going on this is the instance type the instance is running the uh, instance ID sorry uh, the instance is running the instance type is T2 micro is being launched in USA East uh, E2 this is the public DNS as you see this is the IPv4, this is the private DNS, and this is the private IP. And it is being launched in my default VPC in my subnet too. This is, um, as you see, this is the AMI, and it is going to be an Ubuntu instance. And uh, this is the root device that has been associated to it. And then let's go and see the status checks. So. As you see, still in an initializing mode. Okay, and soon the status checks will be completed. So we'll wait for that to be completed. This is the basic monitoring, the CloudWatch monitoring that comes along uh, with a free account. Okay, so if you scroll down, you will be able to see all the CloudWatch uh, matrix. Now, again, if you especially if you are preparing for the certification exam, you want to actually um, you know review all the various matrix that are available as you see CPU utilization discrete uh, discrete operations uh, these are some of the key matrix uh, another one that you want to keep in mind is network in network out um, and also uh, some yeah I think those are the those are the key ones that I would keep in mind these come with the, the basic uh, the free tier package and the tags that we have added to this is the environment and the production now if I go here and edit the name and I put in uh, number does Ubuntu instance it will add one more tag over here at the bottom so as you see there's a new tag added and now our EC2 instance is completely running as you see the status checks have been completed it's two by two so everything is done and instance is reachable all the checks have been cleared and it's available for you to do any of your deployments or start working with it so um, hopefully this video was helpful and uh, yeah please uh, post your comments at the bottom if you would like me to create any videos um, please uh, you know put your suggestions down in the comments otherwise um, I will see you next time thank you have a nice